for sushi since quarantine. Sushi and marathon training have always had a strong connection for me. I trained for my first marathon while studying abroad in Beijing, China, and there was this one sushi restaurant in the Wudaoko area that my friends and I always used to go to. They had half price sushi and all the rolls averaged somewhere around one US dollar. Not bad. And so my friends and I would go, we'd splurge on sushi, and I distinctly remember eating well over 100 pieces of sushi alone after some particularly long runs. But for me personally, my own love of sushi started years ago as a kid at a mall in New Jersey. And it all started with the California roll. The California roll is a form of iramaki consisting of avocado, cucumber, and imitation crab all bundled inside a rice-lined seaweed wrap. It's ubiquitous with sushi and is the gateway roll most will try before embarking on their own sushi journeys. But how did this roll come to exist? Its origin is controversial. One prevailing theory states that the roll was born in the 1960s in an area of Los Angeles dubbed Little Tokyo. Chef Ichiro Mashita reportedly developed this roll in his restaurant Tokyo Kaikan by replacing toro, or fatty tuna, with avocado during the off-season. To further appeal to the American palate, Mashita began making the roll inside out, with rice on the outside and nori seaweed on the inside, after seeing many diners peeling the seaweed off of the roll. The most widely accepted story, though, is born out of Vancouver, Canada in 1971. Chef Hidekazu Tojo reportedly developed this roll while attempting to create sushi that Canadians would like. In Japan, Chef Tojo was known for omakase creations, which loosely translates to, I'll leave it up to you in which the chef creates food based upon what's fresh and available and what he thinks the diner would enjoy. Similar to Chef Mashita's story in Los Angeles, Chef Tojo developed the role after diners struggled with eating seaweed and raw fish. In 2016, Chef Tojo of Vancouver received recognition from the Japanese Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries for creating the California roll, being named a Goodwill Ambassador for Japanese cuisine. As to why it's named the California roll, Chef Tojo remarked it was particularly popular with diners from Los Angeles. But one question remains. How do we make this? To make the California roll, we'll need the following ingredients. Avocado, cucumber, imitation crab meat, sushi rice, sushi rice vinegar, nori seaweed, sesame seeds, and a rolling mat. It's super important that you use sushi rice and don't try to substitute for brown or basmati rice. Sushi rice is a lot smaller and is a lot stickier, which is exactly what you need for sushi. You'll begin by making rice in the rice cooker. Rice cookers are great for making sticky rice. Once ready, put the cooked rice in a bowl to cool. When just warm, add the rice vinegar and mix it together. Fun fact, sushi literally means sour flavor. Around the 13 to 1500s, Japanese people were wrapping fish inside vinegar soaked rice to extend shelf life. They found that the rice actually tasted good, so they started eating it with the fish, which eventually evolved into modern sushi. While your rice is cooking, you can toast some sesame seeds over a medium heat. This is optional, but I like to do it so it really brings out that sesame flavor. Then prep your veggies and imitation crab meat by julienne cutting them into strips. Next, split your nori in half by folding along the middle and working it until you can tear it easily. Wrap your mat three to four times tightly in plastic wrap. The plastic wrap helps with cleanup by protecting the mat and make sure the roll doesn't stick to the mat. You can cut some holes in the plastic to help it lay flat and not create air bubbles. Once all of this has been prepared, we're ready to rock and roll our sushi. Your nori has two sides to it, a shiny side and a not so shiny side. Lay your nori on the mat, shiny side down. Throughout this process, you'll be wetting your hands and tools to make sure that nothing sticks together. Slightly wet your hands, then begin rolling rice onto the nori, covering as much of the nori as possible. Then again, wet your hands and flip the nori. If you made your rice right, it should all stick to the nori. Begin assembling your roll with the idea of having your firmest pieces away from you. If any of the pieces are too big, you can trim them now. You want to use the most consistently sized pieces so your roll is evenly proportioned. I like to almost build a pyramid with the avocado underneath the crab. This helps keep fillings in place when rolling. Now comes the tricky part. There are many different ways to roll a sushi roll, and after trying a bunch of different methods, I found that this method in particular gave me the best and most consistent results. Wet your hand slightly, then place your thumbs on the bottom of the mat, and your remaining fingers on the cucumber, holding the cucumber in place as you firmly roll the mat just over the cucumber with a little nori still exposed at the end. Firmly hold the roll inside the mat with your hand while pulling from the other end of the mat to lock the ingredients into place. Then open the mat slightly and finish rolling it over. Then once again, hold the roll inside the mat firmly while pulling on the end of the mat to completely lock the ingredients in place. 
You want to avoid squeezing or rolling the sushi roll. And congratulations, you made a sushi roll. The next part can also be tricky. There are a couple different ways to cut the roll, but most importantly, you want to make sure that you have a very sharp knife and that you're also wetting your knife in between each cut so the rice doesn't stick to it. Once ready, wet your knife and cut down the middle of the roll. You'll want to use long, even sawing motions and not chopping motions like you will with vegetables. Then continue cutting your roll. I personally like cutting the roll like this because if needed, I can easily lay the mat back on top of the roll to restructure it a final time before plating. Then arrange it how you'd like and rinse and repeat. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 5 for difficulty to make and a 9 for taste. The key really is in the rice. You want to make sure that you're using a good sushi rice vinegar, and honestly, price doesn't really equate. If you're feeling adventurous, maybe consider making your own so you could tweak it to exactly how you want it to taste. But trust me, if you have a bad sushi rice vinegar, it's going to make your roll taste bad. Trust me. Now, as far as price goes, the average California roll in the United States is $6.99. For me to purchase all these materials, it cost me less than $10, and I was easily able to make 16 rolls and have leftover materials afterwards. And so, would I continue making sushi in the future? Definitely. It saves me a lot of money, I eat a lot of sushi, and honestly, it's pretty fun. And so, if you'll excuse me, I have some sushi to make. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. If you've made this dish before or have your own take on it, share it with us in the comments. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching. You're still here? All right, here's an extra tip. You can make a simple spicy mayo by combining a little bit of sriracha with some mayo and mixing it. That'll give your California roll a little extra punch. Now really, I'm gonna get back to sushi.